Recently, the United States Department of Commerce, the Bureau of the Census, came out with census statistics uh, for the year 2010. Uh, the census was actually done back, all of the numbers are as of April 1, 2010. And I think when you, when you look at these numbers, and in this, uh, this is online as well, uh, I think it, it really tells you an awful lot about Cape Elizabeth, where we've been, where we are, and perhaps where we're going. Uh, so what this brief presentation does, looks at how our population has changed, and we also look at these other six communities. You, you asked why are we looking at these six, the question is always asked. Uh, in this instance, we've been looking at these communities since 1990, and we, so we dug out the 70 data and the 80 data back then, and to try to go back and to get new towns and to go back that far would be difficult. But, but it, basically, these are the inner ring towns around the city of Portland. Uh, if you look at our overall population, the big number, it, for those of you that were here in the 60s, there was quite a bit of growth, though this doesn't show it. Uh, we actually leveled off population uh, between 1970 and 1980, uh, was just about the same. When, when people talk about growth in Cape Elizabeth, and as it relates to population, uh, the really huge growth was in the 1980s, from 1980 to 1990. And, and not only did we, we have population growth then, but as you'll see later on, we also had, a, uh, we had housing growth because pop, ever since 1970, the, housing, the household size has kept getting smaller. So, you know, simply to you know, add more population, there's other, there's other variables go, going on as well. As you can see, over the last 20 years, population has uh, actually uh, been fairly stable. Over the whole 40 years, uh, we gained an average of 30 people, uh, 31 folks, uh, over the course of that 40 period each year. Uh, if you look at, this is, you have to keep reminding, because you have to be careful the headings in this, because we're switching back and forth as to what we're looking at. This is actually a 20-year period for 1990 to 2010. During this period, we had an overall growth of a little under 2%. What's interesting is, and it comes, comes up a little bit later, we've had more growth in housing units than in households. And the, the difference is a housing unit doesn't need to be occupied. A household needs to be occupied. Mike, is that total growth of 161 people? People, that's people. Yep, that's people, and then we're switching to housing units. So basically, the, the point being made is while we have growth of 1.8% in population, in actual housing units, we had almost 15%, and in households, we had 11%. In back during when the census was taken, we had almost 350 homes that were vacant. And this includes all those that go to Florida, who aren't back by April 1. And it also, we had 50 rental units that were vacant back last April 1st. And then we had 50 units, 50 homes mostly, that were in transition. They were for sale, and the, the folks had moved out or they had sold and the new folks hadn't moved in. I'm surprised at the 18 number, but again, that's what the, the census reported. The, the next statistic I think is fascinating. Cape Elizabeth is not thought of as a place that has a lot of folks that rent property. Uh, however, one out of every nine residents in 2010 actually rented property in Cape Elizabeth. I think that number is probably a lot higher than, than the, the thought is when people think of Cape Elizabeth. Again, during this 20-year period, you know, a, a household size decreased, but that isn't anywhere near the decrease that we, we saw in the, uh, in the 70s and 80s. We were, we were once up to almost four folks per household, and now we're at 2.5. This is, this is uh, to me, really fascinating. Uh, uh, I was in the category of under 55 or fi uh, back when the census was, but I'm now, I'm, I'm now in that 55 uh, point. So the, the, these statistics mean a little more to me. Uh, You're having trouble making that statement. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you look at, you know, again, if you look at the headings, it's a little tricky. It's 70, 90, and 2010, 20-year intervals. However, the last column is actually the last 10 years. It's 2000 to 2010. So you look at the population, you can look at any of these numbers. Of, of those that are 0 to 18, or 0 to 17, uh, 0 to 18 is not available. 0 to 17, uh, that that group of population has actually gone from 38% of the total population, and now it's only a quarter of the population. If you look at the, the, those 55 and over, that was 17% of the population, and it's now doubled. It's 34% of the overall population. And you look at the, the raw numbers, 
uh, you know, all of the growth that we're having is really in ages 55 and over. And uh, you know, it's particularly interesting, the, the one I didn't highlight is if you look at the population 25 to 44, this generally is when, you know, folks have kids, uh, no, you know, not necessarily totally within that age group, but it's mostly when kids are born. That part of the population has, has really uh, declined in, in raw numbers. You know, to lose 575 of that population in a 10-year period is, is pretty significant of the, the childbearing age. Uh, and, and this sort of ties in the same thing, but it looks at it slightly different. And what it, what it really brings in is the, by putting when, when these folks were born, and you can see how it, it lines up with the baby boom. If you look at that 55 to 64 age group at the beginning, this isn't the whole baby boom generation, but it is those that came in immediately after World War II through 1955. And that group alone in the last 10 years increased 72% in, in raw numbers as to those that are in that age group. Uh, overall, 55 plus increased 865. That includes, you know, uh, all those above 64 as well, if you're trying to figure out the numbers. And again, that, that 25 to 44 group, uh, that dropped 27 percent. Uh, you know, pretty significant. Uh, we often get asked how many households have school-age kids. Uh, we don't know exactly because they don't report it, but what they do report is that a little over 1,200 households have individuals under the age of 18. This would be 0 to 17, roughly a third of the households. Uh, over 65, we're talking 55, this is over 65, we have a little over a thousand households now have uh, folks over the age of 65 or almost 30 percent of the homes in Cape Elizabeth. The other interesting thing we're seeing is we're seeing more renter-occupied homes in Cape Elizabeth. Back in 1990 there were about 460 and now, now it's about 520. Uh, we're also seeing more vacant units and what's interesting, if you look at, for example, the vacant units between 2000 and 2010, we, we had 111, I think is the number, more vacant housing units. So even the households that were built during the last 10 years, the, popu the reason the population went down, in part, is because we had that many more vacant units. And vacant units does include the snowbirds, includes those rents, includes those homes. Question and answer, Mike. So, a vacant unit is any household that doesn't have somebody living it on the date of the census. Exactly. So, if you're in Florida, 51 percent of the year, you're not counted. That's vacant. You're vacant. Right. So, it's nothing to do with houses for sale that are on the market. It's 50 of those units are houses for sale. The other thing we believe is happening with renter occupied is in in large part because of the economy. When people can't sell their homes, instead they're they're renting it out to someone else. And we're seeing some neighborhoods that are having more and more rental properties. I know some of you, some people are renting their home on a, on a nightly basis even. Uh, down by the water, we're seeing about 12 to 15 homes are advertised that way and online that uh, they're being rented on a nightly basis. So it's a, it's a different phenomena we're, be, we're beginning to see. Uh, if you look at how we're comparing with these, with these regional towns, what this shows, again, is from 1990 to 2010, the last 20-year period. And it shows that there were about 16,500 extra citizens in these six towns during, that came in during that 20-year period. If you look at where Cape Elizabeth stood, out of the growth of 16,500, we were roughly 1% of that pie. So, you know, when, when, when we talk about growth, and, and again, this is population, not housing units, but we talk about growth in Cape Elizabeth, and you hear, you know, many complaints about growth. It's, it's all sort of relative. You know, Yarmouth was 3%, Cumberland was 8%. It's no secret that Falmouth, Gorham, and Scarborough had a lot more growth during the last uh, 20 years. But it ended up Cape Elizabeth, it was just about eight additional folks per year uh, the population increased during the last 20 years. If you look simply at the last 10 years, uh, we actually lost an average of five people a year. Uh, and the other interesting thing to see, if you look at the column additional persons in the middle, the, the bottom number there is 5,002. You go back to the last sheet, it was 6,474. So out of the last, the population growth in the last 20 years 
11,500 of it roughly was in the first 10 years and only 5,000 of it was in the second 10 years. In other words, the growth rate from 2000 to 2010 was half of what it was in, uh, from uh, 1990 to 2000. You can also see in 2000, 2010, surprisingly it was Gorham that had the biggest population growth. Everyone looks at Scarborough and always thinks it's Scarborough, but uh, Gorham was actually up about 45%. Again, Cape and Yarmouth uh, both lost a little population in the last 10 years. Uh, so summarizing that section of it, Cape Elizabeth's absorbed 1% of the growth of the inner suburban towns, uh, while population since 1990 has increased 2%, uh, housing units have increased about 15 percent. We're seeing increased vacant units, 148 more since 1990, and we think that's because of so many people being away, and we're seeing more and more rental units. So the point of all this is that you know, every business, every government needs to be looking at these demographic issues. You know, it, it's no secret that the baby boom is getting older. Uh, but, you know, a lot of things have been forecast. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. We're now, you know, the, we now have the numbers that, that back up what the forecasts were. Uh, and it has huge implications for public policy. I was, did this presentation in the department heads early today, and we were talking, for example, how does it affect the fire department? Well, you know, obviously you're responding to a lot more rescue calls as people get older, but the other thing is, is your volunteers have generally been in that younger age group, and, you know, you get some people age 55 years old, older volunteer. In fact, they've been some of our best volunteers, but we're not getting the younger volunteers. You know, it's amazing, again, that the fire department has managed to keep the younger volunteers uh, for the fire companies themselves, but it really, as you look, it, you know, it, it makes you wonder what's going to happen with the rescue. It, it raises issues with code enforcement. Do we need to be doing more in terms, you know, we're getting more and more calls about rental units and folks concerned with heating issues and some of those things you typically get with landlord-tenant relations. Uh, we, we're getting more and more of those calls. You know, it's, I believe that uh, it would be very helpful at some point for the council, the school board, planning board, to really look at these numbers and to, to brainstorm of what does it mean for the different services we provide? What does it mean for some of the public policy issues you look at? And, and how does it all play out? I, I look at, you know, my conclusion is basically We've, we've got to deal with this reality. Uh, we, we sort of know what's coming. We know the baby boomer is going to get older. Uh, but, you know, we go back to, if you look at the 70s and 80s, Cape Elizabeth really made its mark as a family-friendly community. And you have all of these homes that are occupied by people age 55 and over. And, you know, they want to have, some, some of them want to have lower taxes, but they also want to make sure that their property values are maintained. And I think you need to look back at, you know, and, and I know we've had the debate sometimes, to what degree is it the town's responsibility to help maintain property values as the private sector. But if, if a community doesn't balance out the needs of the future generations and, and trying to protect the investments uh, to continue to make the town family friendly with, the, with some of the concerns of those 55 and older, uh, who want less in taxes, if, if, we, if we don't find the proper balance, we're in tough shape. And so my point is, is we need to think about that. And I think as you look at your agendas, you look at how you're spending your time on, on different issues, I, I think it should be with the backdrop of some of these issues uh, and some of the demographics that we're looking at. We, we're definitely getting older, and uh, it, it makes, you know, we're seeing it all, and we're also seeing it, community services is struggling with enrollments and programs, they just had to cancel something they'd done 22 straight years of an outing for middle school students. Uh, there's all these things going on and when we look at the census, it begins to provide answers as to why this is happening, but what it fails to do is really provide the answers of what we should do as a result of all these, these things happening. So I, I encourage the council over the summer and in the fall to look at some of these issues. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mike. Does anybody have any questions for Mike on this? Frank? I think just as an observation, Mike, when you look at the, uh, the shift in population, uh, 25 to 44, we sort of decline at 5, 575, over 55, the increase of 865 seems to suggest to me that basically 
uh, people are staying in town as their kids get older and move out, which is causing a decline in the, the average inhabitants per household. And re what it really raises the question is, these folks who are empty nesters now, are they going to stay here? Is the economy causing them to stay here because the housing values are lower than they think they are? Um, and if the economy improves and housing values stabilize, will they move out and then bring another resurgence and growth with younger kids? Yep. And it might be worthwhile as we think about this over the next six months or whatever, maybe even do a, s a simple survey mm -hmm. of people in this category and say, propensity to move, propensity to downscale, and how that may affect population adjustments in future years. No, it's, it's, we, we don't know those answers. And, no. uh, yeah, I do know when Falmouth, back in 1980, we had about the oldest population, population anywhere in the state. And then they had all the, the schools they needed to do and all that, and everyone blamed it on the new homes. The reality was that about 65% of the growth in school population in Falmouth was a result of exactly what you were just describing. It was as a result of people moving out, being replaced with younger families. I was just going to say, we're having a decline in that 25 to 45 age, you said, and based on what Frank was just saying, it's a nice observation as the state of Maine is having a problem with kids who go off to college and then don't come back because there's no jobs. I think we should maybe look into why kids who went off to college aren't coming back home. I mean, just, it's, you know, the economy is the blame for everything. <laughs> and Thank you. And you do have in your handout a lot more data, and not only to that point, of how Cape compares with the U.S., with the state of Maine, with the county, and with Cape. There's, there's a chart there that, you know, even to the point of, you know, how many uh, Filipinos live in the state of Maine, Cape Elizabeth. It just goes on, on and on with so many different descriptions based on questions they asked. Right. Uh, thank you, Mike.